where, where do you think training is going? I mean, there's a lot of options out there. You, you do training at your facility. Um, there's associations that do training. There's prop for profit organizations. You know, you have videos. I mean, somebody could probably learn how to machine just by immersing themselves in your videos. Yep. Um, you know, Titan, he has his Academy NIMS. Where do you think it's going? Good question. Yeah, everything you just said, I think, is viable. I think what I uh, what I try to do is let a 13 year old or a 17 year old just know what machining is. Know that that exists. Too many people don't realize how did the injection mold that made the shoes that I'm wearing get made. How did that bolt action rifle get made? I just want you to know that that exists. I don't care if that's not what you want, but I don't want you to realize that existed later in life. And what a machinist is now isn't the same thing when, when certainly Jim, when you would have likely gone through a program, because now it can be, uh, you know, a, a quote unquote machinist could really be somebody whose full-time job is writing custom pro post processors. It could be a full-time cam person. That's almost more like oh. playing a computer game in simulation totally. type stuff. Um, or it could be tool and die. There's so many different uh, avenues of it. And I do think it's going to get a little bit more siloed where you have experts in those respective things. Um, what I do know is um, I struggle with schools. Uh, even the local schools that I try to get involved with, the way the local and city and state and federal programs run is they're behind and they, you know, specific things like continuing to push high speed steel tooling, continuing to push stuff on bridge ports. I'm sorry, I don't need someone to know how to run a bridge port anymore. It's just not. I don't either. Okay, so I, I do not have any. So you're taking shop. a stand on that because there's a lot of people that that say Boom. you should. I agree with you on that. There's one. a lot of people that yes. say you should start with the basics. The joke that we've no. now sort of adopted is I would rather have a student who can talk to me about JavaScript modifying a post processor than understands power feed on a bridge port. Don't care about the bridge I, port. I agree with you 100%. I don't on need, that, man. You don't need to feel what a reamer feels like going through a hole anymore. We have a speeds and feeds library, we have digital tooling, we have, t we have reps. It's just not. So you th it's not saying I don't like that stuff, but it's not where you should be spending. And when you go through a high school program that's two years and the last. 25 days they introduce them to handwritten g-code no introduce introduce they should have been knowing that from the day one what is a g what is go what is you know what is a g81 what is an ro plane what is you know a feed rate so yeah, I, I, totally I, get I literally it. had a conversation and i didn't even get a chance to tell you about this jim a couple hours ago i talked with a gentleman named john he told me you know like how do we partner up with you we're starting our high school machining program well, and that's cool gonna, to hear that yeah it is great but you I doubt that they have CNC machines in there. So how do they start? To me, I always cared more about the ability to go from nothing to something. I was never the guy who was saying myself or advising others, oh, go take out a loan for 100K, buy a vertical machining center. You'll figure it out. You'll throw that thing, you'll throw that ER32 into the chuck in the table and you'll have a five-digit five spindle repair. Um, so I like the Hormog for those reasons. They work great for for us nowadays as kind of second-op machines, as a training machines. And then we have a very active internship program where we have two or three people coming through pretty regularly. Um, and so those machines are both affordable for schools, and I believe there's a fair amount of active kind of grant-type money to set up those sorts of labs. So a lot of these high schools could actually probably outsource their their machining program if they needed to. Well, no, what I'm saying is you could probably afford to get uh, enough bridge, uh, bridge ports, enough Tormox in, certainly compared to, you know, one uh, one VMC would buy a four Tormox. Right. And to me, if you're a student, you've got to make parts. You've got to figure out coordinate systems. You've got to make those mistakes. You've got to use edge finders. You've got to set up tools. It's not just, hey, we've got Well, one, I don't think one, they even need edge finders. I think they got to have a probe. Probes. They've got to have yeah. a probe. Sure. I, sure. The yeah. edge finders are gone. You know what shop, I mean? I don't shop. even think we use, I don't even think we use um, edge finders anymore. We don't sell a lot of edge finders anymore. No, I would imagine. Rainershaw probes might be where I draw the line, though, on high school kids learning because those those, those are, are expensive. Yeah. Those I know, expensive, and those, yeah. the stylus are expensive to replace. Yeah, we use I know timers though, where you can do all three in one, and that's a pretty yeah. common tool. And yeah. anyway, so anyway, you you would say don't start with the bridge port though, Correct. even for a high school program. Mm -hmm. Yeah.